What does compassion mean? What does compassion mean? Okay, who else can explain? Compassion, yes. Loving. Yes. Come on. Carry on. Raise your hand. Come on. Compassion. What is compassion? He likes, he loves to give and he likes to. Yes, that's Yes, what else is compassion? If if I say to you, can you please be compassionate towards me? What am I asking for? Not really. Anyone else? Yes, caring. What else? Caring, being kind, being thoughtful. Compassion basically means to be merciful. Have you ever heard the phrase, have mercy, can you please have mercy on me? Who's heard this phrase? Have mercy on me, for God's sake. <laughs> this is what we say. So what does this mean, have mercy on me? What does that mean? Be kind. Be kind to me. You know, listen to me, you know, be... Just do, do justice with me, be merciful towards me, be kind to me, be caring towards me. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the Rahman. And Ar Rahman is the one who is the most compassionate. Ar Rahman is known as Ismul Mubalaba. Like in Arabic, Ar Rahman is the term, is the exaggerated term. So, for example, me and you can be merciful. We can be compassionate, but who is the most compassionate? So he is the he is Ar Rahman, and is Ar Ar Rahman is also a name of someone. Who is it? A name of Allah. So he is the most compassionate. So that means that me and you, we can donate a million dollars. We can do everything. We can be so nice and kind, but who is the most compassionate? Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So this is why if something happens to us, for example, if, if, if you fall down, sometimes what happens when you fall down? You get angry, what do you say? Nowadays, what do we say? If anything happens, what do you say? For God's sake. Don't we say that? We say, for God's sake. Is this good or is it bad? Why? Because it's like you're blaming God. But is it God's fault if something bad happens? Whose fault is it? It's your own fault sometimes. Sometimes we need to take the blame ourselves. So, because Allah is who is He? He's the most compassionate. Ar Rahman. So, this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most compassionate. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He cares about us the most. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He cares about His believers the most. Ar-Rahman, and He is Ar-Rahim, which also means the most he's compassionate, the most merciful. It's the similar meaning. So what was, the, so, and okay, what's the, what's the reverence of saying Bismillah? When should you say Bismillah? What does it mean, Bismillah? It, I begin with the name of Allah. I begin with the name of Allah, the most compassionate, the most merciful. So why do we begin with the name of Allah? Okay. Yes? Yes, exactly. The reason why we begin with Allah's name is for barakah. What do we do when we, what do we say when we eat? Bismillahi wa'ala. Why do we do that? Yes, Bismillahi wa'ala. And why? We do that so our food becomes blessed when we mention Allah's name. And another reason why do we do that is because why? And what do we say after we've eaten? Before we eat, we say. No, before we eat, we say. MashaAllah, you should say. And that's, you know, he's a good. Before we eat, we should also say, also say Alhamdulillah because some people in the world, they are dying of hunger. So you should thank Allah before and after. So you should say Bismillah and what should you say after? Alhamdulillah. Because He is the one who provided you the... Because He is the most compassionate. So this is why whenever you start something good, 
nowadays, whenever you should, whenever you do something bad, you should what should you do? First of all, you shouldn't be doing anything bad. But if you have been tempted to do something bad and you want to be guided safely, what should you decide? A'udhu billahi minashallah. But on the other hand, if you want to do something good, what should you decide? Okay, from tomorrow, I want every one of you to bring a notepad and a pen, okay? Because you should be writing this down. But inshallah, you will remember, won't you? So, because the reason why it's very important to bring the notepad and a pen is because sometimes we forget. And it's always good to take notes. Because remember, the most, the cleverest student is the one who takes notes. Because what, why is, why is he the cleverest student? Because after the teacher gives the lesson, sometimes we forget. But the clever student, he goes home and he, he has everything. So, when it comes to exam time, on the day of the exam, when you don't know the answer, the student who had taken the notes, he looked at his notes and he's able to give the answer. So it's very important to take notes. Even when you go to school, remember, when the teacher says something, write it down. Because it will become useful in the exam. Don't just, don't just, think, don't just say in the class something, yeah, I'm Mr. Noy, don't know you. Exactly. So, we should always, because a student is someone who is, he has to be smart. But he's, he, he's smart if he listens to the teacher, and if he respects the teacher, and if he takes notes from the teacher's words. So this is why we have to respect our teachers as well. Why? Because they, if our teachers didn't teach us, then what would happen? Exactly. So we have to respect our teachers. Okay, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. So whenever we start something good, we should say Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. This doesn't mean you go home today, and it doesn't mean you watch the movie and you say Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. You put the deed on it. Doesn't mean you buy a lottery ticket and you say Bism you know, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. No. In everything good, you should say Bismillah. Because there are certain things you shouldn't be doing. So this is why in everything good that you do, you should say Bismillah rahman rahim Even if you sit in the car, even if you enter the house, whatever you do, you should say Bismillah rahman rahim Even if you're sitting in the car, you open the door of the house, you open the door of your room, you should say Bismillah rahman rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. What does Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen mean? Very good. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All praise is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. And who is Allah? He is the Lord of Rabbil Alameen. He is the Lord of the entire universe. Alameen does not refer to one universe because there are so many there are so many galaxies and universes so who is the lord of all these galaxies and universes allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he's also king pardon he's also king he's also king what is that he's king he's king yeah he's the king very good alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin all praises for allah who is the lord of all the universes, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. So, what is, what is this Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen? Okay, A'udhu Billah was asking Allah's safety. So when we want Allah's safety, we say A'udhu Billah in the Shaykh al When someone puts a bad thought, we say A'udhu Billah. Bismillah is when you want Barakah. When you're doing something good, you want blessing. So you say Bismillah. So what is Alhamdulillah? So, A'udhu Billah was the kalima, was the word of safety. A'udhu Billah was the word, Ta'awud was the word of safety, Bismillah was the word, Bismillah was the phrase of Baraka. What is Alhamdulillah? Alhamdulillah is the phrase of shukr, the phrase of thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we say Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, we are thanking who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
So we say Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alim. What, what do we thank him for? What, why, why do you thank someone? So there's a principle in life that when someone gives you something, when someone does a favor for you, when someone buys you a gift, what do you say? Thank you. So we are saying Alhamdulillah. All the praise. And do you know what Alhamdulillah means? Alhamdulillah in Arabic. Alhamdulillah has many, Alif Lam has many meanings. Because this is like what, because remember there's good praise and there's bad praise. There is good praise and there's bad praise. But what kind of praise are we talking about? All the good praise. And all the good praise is for who? <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alif Lam al istighraqi in Arabic, which means that in the entire humanity, all the good praise is for who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And He is the Lord of the entire universe. He is the Lord of mankind. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. What does Ar-Rahman mean? I told you before. Most compassionate. What does compassion mean? Caring, nice, uh, merciful. Yes, very good. Yes? Yes. So if you do a good deed, what's your name? So if Hamza does a good deed, I will say, Hamza is so compassionate. You know? And if he does a bad deed, I will say Hamza is so... No. He's so inconsiderate. You know? Exactly. But, you know, so Hamza is so compassionate, etc. So what is Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim? Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. What does that mean? Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. So Allah, all praise, all the good praise is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ar-Rahman, who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The one who is the most compassionate and the most merciful. Because praise is, who do we praise? Who gets good praise? Okay, Allah, but in, in life, who is entitled to getting good praise? If you do good things, then people will praise you. For example, if you do your homework on time, if you do good progress in school, what will the teacher do? The teacher will praise you. If you do good things at home, if you listen to your parents, if you help your mother, your father, your sister, then your parents will. So in this life, we should do things so that people... And what happens if your teacher praises you? If, some, if I praise you, then will your parents be happy? So this is why we should do things that we gain praise so our parents become happy with us. So it's very important, remember that. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Maliki Yawmideen. What does Malik mean? Eh? Yes. What else is Malik? Owner, yes. Malik means owner. So Allah is the owner. Nowadays, we think we are the... We think we own everything. Don't we? What do we say? My house. This is my phone. This is my car. This is my book. This is my hat. But we can say this in this life. But on the day of judgment, who is going to be the owner of everything? And who, in reality, who is the owner of everything? Allah, Allah is the owner. Because Allah made this. Because our owner is the one who created everything in the first place. And on the day of judgment, he's going to be the he's going to be the owner. Maliki Yawmiddin. Then on the day of judgment, you can't say this is mine and this is mine and you know. No one's gonna listen to you then. Because why? Yes? Yes. Some people think like Exactly. So if someone says to you that, you know, for example, if someone says to you that, you know, if I, for example, if I have a car and someone says, someone says, look, the factory made this, the person who is working in the factory, he made this. Okay, then you say, okay, you have to, this is why you have to go to the, like you said, you have to 
look at the actual the the substances and you have to look at the things. At the end of the day, for example, if we eat chips, we eat chips. So for example, I made the chips. But who made potato? I grow the I, I grew the potato. But who who created the seeds? Who created the grass? Who created the, because you need grass, you need water, you need soil, and you need rain. What is the two that actually makes the plants grow? So who did all of that? So that means you don't want anything. So that means that Allah is the creator, and the person who made the fries, the person who made the things, he is just a source. He's just a link. Because the real creator is who? So Malik Yawmideen means that Allah is the owner of the Day of Judgment. Malik Yawmideen, yes? Allah made the world in one day. No, six days. Yeah, so you shouldn't be bossy. You should be... So what does compassionate mean? So this is basically when... If, if you be... Being bossy is the opposite of being... Exactly. So... Being bossy, and the, for example, this is what we do. Know sometimes when you're playing a video game, and someone, for, because remember, for example, we're going to be playing in the gym now, and you have, you're going to have to be sharing the you get, sharing the equipment. So if you if you say this is mine, then is that good or is that bad? So what should you say? You should say this is ours. So if, if someone wants to play, you should say please you can't play. You know. You, why don't you join me? You should be compassionate. Okay? Ar Rahman Ar Rahim, Malik Yawmidin, Iya Kana Abudu wa Iya Kana Stain. What does that mean? So you alone we worship and you alone we ask for help. So who do we worship? So we don't worship technology, we don't worship people, we worship who? And who do we ask help from? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So how do we ask help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? By praying, by making dua, by eating namaz, by giving charity. Exactly. So this is how we we have to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help. And the easiest way is that you pray to so when you want something, what should you do? Instead of crying and Sulking, what should you do? Instead of you know crying and shouting and you know saying I want this, I'm gonna do, you know, what should you do? Say, Oh Allah, please can you give me this video game? Oh Allah, please can you give me this toy? Please can and Allah will give it to you. Because your 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 mom and dad won't give it to you. And if you want to become a doctor or you want to become a scholar or a half is what should you say? Allah make me this. So from this we learn that we should always ask who? Allah. Allah subhanahu wa mustaqim What does that mean? Ihdinas sirat al mustaqim Guide me. Guide. Guide me. Guide us on the straight path. Guide us on the straight path. Oh Allah, guide us on the straight path. Remember I talked about how we go into a shopping center and if we wanted to go to a game store and what if we couldn't if what if we weren't able to read the map? Then we would need guidance. So if Allah in the Quran he's saying if we are saying that oh Allah guides on the right path, what does this mean? That means that we don't really know the way, do we? So what do we need in this world? We need guidance. But nowadays, what do we do? We think we know the way. Don't we, don't we think that? We think we know everything sometimes. But is that correct or is that not correct? It's incorrect. So what should we do when we don't know something? So what should we... We say, oh Allah, guide me on the right now. And this is why when you follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and remember when, when, whenever you hear the name of the Prophet, what should you say? You should say, Say after me, Sallallahu Sallallahu Alayhi 
wa alihi wa sallam so let me say again so when we follow the prophet alayhi wa ali so remember what happens when you say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam every time you hear the prophet's name and you say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam what happens yes kind what else the prophet sallallahu said every time you hear my name the prophet sallallahu alayhi said he ordered us send blessings on me and what happens when you send what happens whenever so this means whenever you hear the name muhammad you should say or when you hear the name the holy prophet you should say sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam what happens he returns and what do you get you get the prophet sallallahu said whoever sends salat whoever sends salutations upon me once allah sends 10 blessings upon him so for example if i said to you if you say this if i said to you if i said to you whenever you hear my name say this and i'll give you 10 dollars would you say that of course you would but remember can can you buy blessings with money so the prophet is saying to you every time you hear my name you should say what sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam send salutations upon me so this is why whenever we hear the prophet's name what should we say sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam and the prophet said also in a hadith that whoever makes a dua because remember we have to we're going to ask for dua why because we're going to ask allah's help so whenever we make dua the prophet said whenever you make dua and if in the dua if you don't say if you don't send salutations if you don't say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then the dua is muallaq the dua gets stuck in the skies so if something gets stuck if the dua if your dua is get, getting stuck in the sky is it going to reach allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so what should you read in order for your dua to reach allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam this is why at the beginning of the dua you should say Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad and at the end you should say wa sallallahu ta'ala ala so it's very important whoever does and you should say this to people you should say this to people and you have two options you could say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in your mind but if every one of us say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in your mind then the person next to you will he know what to do so sometimes we need to do we need to say things loud why so that other people they learn as well because we have to teach other people we have to teach our brothers and sisters and this is part of being compassionate we can't be stingy you know some students what do they do they know the answer but you ask them please can you help me what do they say no i'm not going to help you why why because they want they only want to help themselves that's called being selfish so we should not be selfish so this is why whenever you hear the prophet's name what are you going to say sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam why do we say wa ali we could say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam why do we say wa ali why did i tell you to say wa ali wa sallam why why do we have to say why should we say salam on islam isn't isn't sending salams on him enough why do you think anyone pardon in respect because the prophet told us to send salam on his family when the verse was revealed in allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi ya ayyul ladina amanu allah said in the quran oh you who believe allah was talking to us because in the quran allah talks to us because we're the believers he says sallu alayhi wa sallim wa taslima send salutations upon him and send salams upon him in abundance abundantly the, the companions they came to the prophet and they said ya rasulullah kayfa nusalli alayk o prophet of allah how do we send salutations upon him <coughs> the prophet sallallahu then said say allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ali muhammad <coughs> so the prophet sallallahu he told his companions how to send salutations upon him and how did he teach them he said Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa wa ali Muhammad. So we have to follow the teachings of the 
Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa So this is why we have to say sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. So remember that. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Maliki Yawmideen Iyaka Na'abudu Iyaka Nasta'een Ihmina Sirat Al-Mustaqeen So Ihmina Sirat Al-Mustaqeen We ask Allah, we ask in Allah here in this verse that guide us on the right path. So what does that mean? That means that there is one right path and there are many paths which are wrong. For example, you, you, you came to the masjid now you could have gone where? You could have gone to a cinema. Is that the right path or is that the wrong path? In the cinema, are they going to tell you? Are they going to explain to you the meaning of Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen? Are they going to tell you to say some, are they going to tell you to say Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam? Are they going to tell you to be compassionate towards your parents? More, for, more, you're most likely to watch a movie in the cinema where someone is going to be disrespecting his parents, someone is going to be drinking alcohol, there's going to be music, dancing. We don't dance around to forget about Allah. Exactly. So, from this we learn that there are good paths and there are... So which path should we be following? Exactly. How do we follow a good path? Exactly. And we have to... How do you walk on a path? You have to... You have to find it first. And once you're on a good path, remember, once you're walking on a good path, there will, become, there will be some alleyways. For example, if we walk now into a shopping mall, you have a cinema there, you have a store that's selling alcohol. So, there are so many temptations. So, when we're walking on a path, when we say, Ehdina Sirat al Mustaqeen, we're telling Allah to keep us steadfast. What does steadfast mean? Focused. Focused. And focused. For example, let me give you an example. When you are, for example, if we are walking on a bridge, because in our life nowadays, our life, let me give you an example, our life in the dunya, in this life, it's like we're on a bridge. And we're on a bridge which is shaky. So if, in order to us to get from one side of the bridge to the other side of the bridge, we have to stay focused. We cannot slip because what can happen if we slip? So what happens? Every day we are slipping. We're slipping. We have, so the point is that we have to stay Focus. Aidina Sirat al Mustaqim. So from this we learn that there are many paths which are right and wrong. So we should always follow. And we should ask Allah to enable us to follow the right path. Aidina Sirat al Mustaqim. Sirat al Ladina and Amta Ali. Now, in order to us to know about the right path, there have to be people who came in to this world and who had walked on the path. This is why they say, don't talk the talk. Yeah, don't talk, don't talk the if you can't if you can't walk the walk. And this is why they say it's easy to talk the talk, but it's hard to. But in order for us to walk the walk, we need to see people who walk the walk. Who walk the walk? Tell me. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who else? His family, the companions, the awliya. So we should be following them, should we? <coughs> Instead of following Justin Bieber and instead of listening to this, you know, is, is, he, is he walking the walk? So this is why Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim. Sirat al Ladina Namta Alayhi. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He told us about the right path. He said, Follow the Prophet and you will get on the right path. And also the companions and his family members, the Ahlul Bayt, they walk the walk, so we have to follow them. And in order, if you want to follow someone, you have to read about the person, you have to know about them. Nowadays we know more about cartoons. Cartoons are not even realistic. We need to follow the real heroes of Islam. 
So we ask Allah to guide us on the right path, the straight path. This is why Allah Mustaqim means the straight path. What does the word straight mean? Why did Allah say the straight path? What else? Why, 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 would, why, would, why would you say the straight path? Why would Allah say the straight path? Exactly. Very good. Because when you are walking on a straight path, then you will reach the destination. But if you are walking on a path which is bent, which is broken, which is diagonal, it's difficult. So this is why the straight path is the easy path. And the path, oh Allah guide us on the right path, the straight path. The path of those whom you have favored. Who did Allah favor? He favored the Prophet ﷺ, the companions of the Bayt. So we're asking us, we want to follow the same path that they follow. Nowadays we want to do new things. We want to make new paths. Should we make a new path or should we follow the path that they follow? Should we start, should we, can we walk the walk ourselves or should we follow someone who already walked the walk? When someone becomes a boxer, what does he do? He gets a personal trainer. Why does he get a personal trainer? And the personal trainer is usually someone who? Someone who was a world champion. Who's already been there, he's walked the walk, you know, he's, he's knocked people out. Why does he do that? So he can tell him how to win the fight. So why do we follow the Prophet Why do we follow the companions? Because they can tell us how to, how to win the battles. How to walk the right path. How to become world champion. Because if we gain gender, we will be champion. Exactly. Not the path of those. Oh Allah, guide us on the right path. The path of those who you favor. Not the path of those. Not the path of those. غير المغضوب عليه. Not the path of those whom. Your anger was upon. Should you be following someone who's Allah, who Allah is angry with? You think Allah is happy with all these singers and these? Is Allah happy with them? Do they pray namaz? Do they have a beard? They smoke, they drink alcohol, do you think Allah is happy with them? So should we be following them? Who should we be following? So if someone makes you follow them, are they leading you towards good or bad? So we need to realize. Because Allah is angry with them. And O oh Allah, don't guide us. Don't guide us on the path of those who are astray. Who is someone who is astray? Someone who is lost. What happens if you follow a lost guy? He's going to fall off the cliff and he's going to make you fall off the cliff. So you don't follow lost people. These people are lost. They're lost. So we follow the ones who are guided. The ones who know the way. And the Prophet Sallallahu he knows the way. We have to follow the Prophet Sallallahu So, this Surah Al-Fatiha is a Surah which we recite every single day. And look how important of the Surah it is. In the surah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells us and it's like a dua that we make of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we should remember that we should always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help. And we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we ask Allah for his guidance on the straight path. And the path that those he favored upon, not the path of those who he is angry with, or oh, the path of those who are astray. So this is why Surah Al-Fatiha is like a dua. Isn't it? It's like a dua, isn't it? We say, oh Allah, guide me on the right path. It's a dua. 
So what do you say after dua? Did you, did, who, did, any, did, did, you, did you know that the purpose of saying Ameen after Surah al Fatiha? How many of you knew that before? How many of you didn't know that? So this is why we say Ameen at the end. Why? Because after dua you say. And why do we say Ameen after dua? And what else do we should we say now? Now we've made this dua, what should we say now? Because. Oh, we've said Ameen, but our dua is now stuck in the sky. It's gone, it's, it's gone from here, it's in the sky somewhere. So what, what do we need to do now? So, imagine you send me a letter, you send me a gift, and you rang me and you said, you know, you know, I bought you a gift, you know. I say, look, I didn't reach the gift. And then you, you go on the internet. What's the, what's the, what's the parcel company here? UPS or... What else? Post Canada. So you went on the Post Canada website, you rang them and you said, look, I sent a parcel to my teacher, but he hasn't received the parcel. <coughs> and what if they said to you, the parcel is stuck in the sky somewhere? If something is stuck in the sky, that means that I'm not going to get it. So what should you say? No, after we said, Amin, what should we say now? Sallallahu Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad, so that what's going to happen now? It's going to reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the ability to always remain on the straight path so that we always remain guided and we follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family members, the Bayt, the companions. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to always accept our du'as and to help us. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Subhanakallah wa bihamdu. Subhanakallah wa bihamdika. Nashadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa nakubu ilayk. Now, every day, like we began our gathering with the recitation of the Qur'an, then every day I will be explaining some verses of the Qur'an. And tomorrow I will be asking you. So those of you who do not take notes, will see how good your memory is. We'll see how smart you are. Okay? So whoever took notes, it's going to be very easy. And nowadays, nowadays, you have so many gadgets. You can, you have an iPod, you have this. You can press record and you can record. But nowadays, we, are, we start to be recording songs and music. We should be recording these things. So tomorrow I'm going to test you on the meaning of this. I'm going to test you the meaning of each. And whatever I told you, I'm going to ask you, inshallah ta'ala. Okay, now, because this is an assembly and after five minutes now we're all going to go and we're going to play inshallah ta'ala but now we're going to sing a song in praise of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam because in islam we don't sing songs we don't you know we don't say we don't sing christmas carol we don't sing hip hop or rap yes the muslim tradition is that you praise who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Allah and we praise His Holy Prophet. Why do we praise Allah? Because He gave us life, He gave us food, He gave us our parents, He gave us a house, He gave us everything. And why do we praise the Prophet sallallahu Why? Because He brought us the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is our master, He is our leader. <coughs> so now, we are going to sing this poem and I want you to sing with me and this poem is in English and I want you to sing it and inshallah by the end of this these two weeks I want everyone to have memorized this and last time those children who came I made you write this down so if you have a pen and paper you can write down so inshallah let's sing but before we sing let's what do we what should we decide because we're going to we're going to be beginning something good now so what should we decide so let's all say Bismillah, Bismillah. Rahma, Nir Rahim. Okay, what else should we say? Alhamdulillah, what else should we say? We want to gain some blessings, okay? so what else should we say? Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now you need to sing with me, and when you're all singing, I don't want you to break the windows. <laughs> so make sure. This is why they say, when someone, there's a phrase in English that don't, 
Don't crack the window. When someone sings out of tone. So I want to examine and see who has the nice. It's like, a, it's like we're going to see the talent today, you know? It's Muslim idol. <laughs> it's Muslim idol here. So we're going to see who has the best voice. Because we, we never know. One of you sitting here today may have the talent to become a Muslim artist. So let's see who has the talent, inshallah. So you have to sing with me, inshallah. Every night and every day. Every night and every day. Remember in every way. Never forget to say La ilaha illallah. Every night and every day. Remember. Come here because I'll actually. You know that. You know? You have it written down? It's because I can't remember it exactly. <coughs> every night and every day, remember in every way. Come on, louder. If, if, if nowadays what happens when we we be listening to songs, we be screaming and shouting. Is that a good thing or is that a bad thing? You should be screaming, you should be, you should look screaming and shouting first of all. It's not a good thing. You should be enjoying and chanting the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because He is our, you shouldn't feel shy about praising Allah. If you, if you don't feel shy about singing songs, singing, you know, you should, you should, this is your, your Muslims. You know, be proud of this. Every night and every, louder. Every night and every day, remember in every way, never forget to say La ilaha illallah, to be able to defeat Shaitan and his deceit, never forget repeat la ilaha illallah every night and every day remember in every way never forget to say 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 la ilaha illallah every night and every day Okay, 
inshallah remember now we're going to inshallah we're going to be going into the gymnasium now we're going to be doing various activities what should we remember to do when we are playing today remember we have to be compassionate so now we are we are going to practice what we preach so now we were just talking about compassion now we have to go and walk so we have to go and walk the so I'm going to be observing every one of you and I'm going to see whoever is the most compassionate and remember listen at the end of these two weeks whoever has the best character whoever shows compassion they will be given prizes so everyone has to be the best person and not just here even when you go to your school in your home you have to continue to be Compassion. Okay, let's go. Bismillah.